Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So if you've seen my TV setup tour already, you'll know that I have an OLED display from LG, which I've been using for the last 9 months or so. But today I wanted to compare that display side by side with a QLED display from Samsung. I wanted to see if I'd made the right choice and whether the cheaper QLED display is as good, better or worse in several categories. So today we're going to be taking a look at both displays, the OLED versus the QLED, the LG versus the Samsung. We're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of both, but not in a lab environment or in a warehouse, which isn't really relevant to you and me, but in a real living room. So what I've done is I've put the timestamps in the description of this video, so if you do want to jump to a certain section you can, otherwise we're going to be taking a look at the viewing angles, response time, reflections, image quality, user interface and amongst other things as well. All things that make a real difference when it comes to purchasing a TV, and I promise you I will keep this jargon free. Now if you are a gamer, and I know a lot of you will probably game on a desk and a monitor setup, but if you're a gamer like myself and you game from a TV, these are probably the two TVs or the main two TVs that you'd be interested in purchasing this year. Now I've tried to keep this test as fair as possible, and throughout the video I do move the camera up and down keeping each TV central when comparing. I'm also using a 4K HDMI splitter, so I'm able to split the signal from my PS4 Pro to both TVs simultaneously, along with other feeds including Netflix. First up we've got to take a look at the awesome picture quality, and both of these TVs do not disappoint. Honestly, straight on, with the exact same content being fed to them, they look incredible. So they are both 4K, and they both offer HDR, but that doesn't mean that they look exactly the same. There are far more factors when it comes to getting the perfect TV. So first up, I'm going to show you what the PS4 looks like on both TVs. I'll flick between a few different games to give you an idea of what they look like. But remember that the top, the wall mounted TV, is the LG OLED, while the bottom one, the one on the floor, that's the Samsung QLED. So they are very, very similar, but the first thing you'll notice when comparing them side by side in this way is how the Samsung looks a little washed out when compared to the LG. I'm not talking about the colours here, I'm talking about the overall vibrance and the contrast of the TVs. Here we've got Warzone for example, and if you look at the rank number at the top right corner, the LG is just that little bit cleaner, that little bit more vibrant, whereas the Samsung looks a little bit flat. Now my room is quite bright, so that's not really going to help in the situation here, but you can see that the two screens look a little bit different, only when compared side by side. Now here's The Last of Us Part 2. Just to give you an idea of what an awesome game looks like on these screens. And as you can see, comparing them side by side, they don't look that different. I mean, you could literally be playing on either of the two screens and you would be happy with the result. So the blacks on the OLED are incredible. Day and night, the blacks are just perfect. Whereas the QLED, like most LCD and LED TVs, it just can't compete when it comes to the pure black. The reason for this though is the OLED uses individual pixels when showing the image on the screen, where each pixel can be turned on and off, whereas the QLED is an edge lit display, which means that it's not really possible to turn the entire screen off or an individual pixel off while it's lighting other areas of the screen. So both TVs as we've mentioned are 4K and HDR10 ready, and this means you can watch Netflix in 4K or you can watch that Ultra HD Blu-ray, both will look incredible. So what are the viewing angles like on these TVs? Now I'll be honest, it's not something that you would even think about doing if you went into a store to look at TVs. You would stand straight on in front of the TV, you'd have a look at it and you'd say yeah that looks great. Now we know that straight on, both these TVs look great. Now this is probably one of the most overlooked points when choosing a TV. And this is where the OLED display is really impressive. It doesn't matter at what angle you view the TV, you'll still have a relatively clear picture. The colours will still look vibrant, the image doesn't look washed out, and it doesn't look compromised at all. So if you've owned a plasma before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about as the viewing angles were incredible on those as well. Then moving on to the QLED display, and although looking straight on is fine, there's no issues with that, as soon as you move off center, almost immediately the colors start to fade, and it kind of looks a little bit cloudy and a little bit washed out. And as you move further and further around and away from the center of the screen, is at this point then it's almost unwatchable, and it's not enjoyable at all. Now this isn't unique to this TV though, this is just LCD and LEDs in general. And when comparing the two side by side, you can really see the difference of the OLED on the top versus the QLED on the bottom. And it's been a long time since I've owned an LCD or an LED TV, but when comparing it like this, I honestly find the blurry and the washed out look of the QLED just unwatchable from anywhere else other than straight on. So if you're needing or wanting to view the TV from anywhere other than directly straight on in front of the TV, the OLED has the perfect picture throughout with almost zero compromise on angle. Okay, so let's take a look at the remotes that comes with both TVs, and they are very, very different. So the Samsung comes with two remotes. 
You've got the traditional looking one with your usual controls along with quick launch buttons for Netflix and Amazon Prime, which is pretty standard really. It also comes with this second remote, which is what I would use. So this has a kind of a minimal look to it. It's only got a few buttons, the buttons that you would need to use. It's got your Netflix and your Amazon buttons, you've got your play, your pause and your volume controls. And this is actually really, really nice. Then you've got the LG remote, which is what I've been using for the last three years across different TVs. And it's called the Magic Remote. So it obviously has all of the controls that you'd expect to see, along again with the Netflix and the Amazon launch buttons, but it's also got a magic wand. Now what this means is that you're able to control the TV like a kind of a mouse pointer. So you literally point it at the screen and you can select any apps or settings that you need. Now this makes it a lot easier to navigate the TV and something that I now just couldn't live without. But you don't need to use the magic wand, you can switch that off just by tapping left and right on the navigational buttons and it will then turn the pointer off. So input lag is an important factor when you're needing to use the TV for gaming. This won't make any difference to watching movies or TV shows. Now both of these TVs, they have a very low input lag. The lower the input lag, the lower the delay between what you're seeing on screen versus what's actually happening in the game. So let's say you have a very slow or high input lag, then you'll be dead in Call of Duty before you've even walked around a corner. And every game will be incredibly frustrating. So the LG OLED is as low as 6.3 milliseconds, and the Samsung, the QLED, is as low as 9.7 milliseconds. Both of these depend on the resolution that you're using, and you do need to make sure that game mode is enabled. So both have very low for a TV, in fact, very low even compared to a monitor, unless you're going for a very high spec gaming monitor. And as I've said, I only game on my TV, and I've never experienced any issues at all with any games that I've played, whether that's Call of Duty, Need for Speed, Rogue Company, or anything else. And talking of games, with the next gen consoles, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X coming out later this year, you may be interested in knowing whether these TVs are ready for those. Well, to make the most of next gen, you'll want 4K resolution, HDMI 2.1, and 120Hz refresh rate. It's not required, but if you are looking for a TV that supports it, it's worth checking the specs now. The good news is that both of these TVs support 4K, and they'll look awesome on any game that you play on next gen. However, when it comes to HDMI 2.1 and 120Hz, the QLED supports neither, while the OLED supports both. So the QLED is capped at 60Hz, while the OLED supports the full 120 In fact, at the time of receiving the LG, the OLED, it didn't even support 120Hz. But by an over-the-air update, LG actually unlocked this feature, which will make an incredible difference when any games that support it. Now this next-gen spec is available on the 2019 and the 2020 OLEDs from LG, so it's great to see them ahead of the curve with this. When it comes to the UI or the operating system on both TVs, they both offer a very similar experience on paper. So they both have the usual apps you'd expect to see, such as Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, and various other streaming services. If you're in the UK, that includes BBC, ITV, Channel 5, and so on. Now, both of these use a different operating system, which in my opinion, makes a huge difference, a bit like you would with an iPhone and an Android device. So Samsung's is called Tizen OS. Now, as you can see here, as I flick through the app store on the TV, it looks great. It's got everything you'd expect to see. You've got the bar across the bottom that you can bring up as the app launcher, and it allows you to select any input, app, or recent apps. So it's pretty clean. And here's the main settings for the TV, which gives you full control over the picture, the audio, and the general settings as you'd expect. Now looking at the LG OS, which is called WebOS, the app launcher on this is slightly different. The way it displays your available apps across the bottom, which I do prefer. But the app store itself, where you download your new apps from, it isn't actually as nice as the Samsung one, it's not quite as slick. It looks quite dated in fact, but it's still easy enough to use. And in the dashboard area, you can view available devices and ports, but what I really like here is the way that you can control the settings. So bringing up the sidebar will show you your picture, your audio, your network and other settings available. Then you have full control over what you need to change. So when it comes to the user experience, again I have to give it to LG and WebOS. During my time with the Samsung TV, it just felt a little bit sluggish. It felt quite slow when comparing it to the LG, which is very fast and very snappy. But honestly, they both offer awesome apps and the UI is pretty clean. But again, I would give it to the LG for the overall look of the apps across the bottom. I quite like the way it displays it, it's very, very sleek. So depending on the layout of your room or how bright it is, reflections could be an issue when it comes to choosing the right TV. So the QLED is almost a matte finish with a kind of a flat look to it and that does prevent reflections. So this is ideal for bright rooms like a conservatory for example, or rooms with windows in the reflection, as you're not going to be too distracted or have too much trouble seeing what's on the TV. The downside to this though, the blacks aren't quite as good unfortunately. Looking at the LG, it's almost mirror-like. It is tinted, so it does help with the blacks and it helps with reducing some reflections, 
but overall it is very, very reflective. Now this means that if you're using it in a bright room, or you're trying to watch a dark movie during the day for example, you're probably going to struggle. Now my room is quite bright during the day, and this is my second OLED, so I don't mind at all, but it's worth bearing that in mind. And as you can see here, the difference between the two when on a dark screen is very noticeable. So I don't watch my TV at this angle. So it doesn't reflect quite as much as this under my normal viewing conditions, but if it did, it would definitely be unwatchable. So this next point I wasn't even gonna mention to be honest, and it's the speakers. So yes, the TVs have internal speakers. They're fine, you know, they're absolutely fine. But honestly, if you're getting a brand new TV and you enjoy watching movies, please just get yourself some external speakers. Don't rely on the internal ones. It doesn't need to be a full home cinema surround kit, even a £150 or a $150 soundbar would do a far better job than the internal speakers on the TV. So the looks and the design might be the last thing that you'd be interested in when it comes to choosing a TV. And let's face it, they all look the same. However, these two have some big differences. So first up, the actual thickness of the TV. So the Samson is pretty thick for a new TV. It's 58mm thick without the stand. It's practically made from plastic throughout, which means it's pretty light, but it looks a little bit cheaper. Then the feet that it sits on, if you're not going to wall mount it, they're quite small and they obviously click on either side. And they literally just slot into the bottom of the TV, there's no screws required at all. Whereas the LG stand is quite a large metal plate, and that sits obviously on the bottom of the TV as well. Now I've actually put a picture on screen now because I'm not using the stand on mine because it's obviously wall mounted. Then you've got the thickness of the LG which is honestly insane. So the top two thirds of the TV is almost paper thin, to the point where you feel like you might break it if you're not careful then the bottom third is a little bit thicker. Now, Samsung have chosen to show their branding on the front of the TV, while LG, well, they've actually decided to remove their branding completely, which gives it a really nice no-notch look, which I much prefer. Both TVs support VESA mounting, so if you're looking to mount it on your wall like I have, then you can. The LG is 300 by 200 millimeters, and the Samsung is 200 by 200 millimeters. So I want to talk to you about burning. And when I did my TV setup tour earlier this year, I had a lot of people commenting that OLED was a bad idea for gaming as it suffers from burning. Well, they are right, kind of. Every TV suffers from burning if you mistreat it. I mean, if you're leaving it on a static image or even a news channel with a logo in the bottom corner, it's going to cause image retention or burning. But for most normal people, you're not going to suffer from it if you don't sit and watch the same channel or an image on the screen for 10 hours a day. But both of these TVs do have tools and settings available to prevent these issues, such as pixel shift and screen savers. And this is my second OLED, and I've never had any burn-in or screen retention issues. So looking at the available ports on these TVs, the LG comes with four HDMI ports, while the Samsung comes with three, probably more than enough for most people plugging it into you know, a couple of consoles and a streaming box like Sky, for example. The LG has uh, three USB ports on the side, and the Samsung has two. And they are both have a LAN port as well for a wired internet connection if you don't want to go for the Wi-Fi option. So both TVs support multiple smart home features as well. So Alexa is supported on both, and you can also use it to airplay to both TVs. And that means that you can share your iPhone, iPad, MacBook screen directly to the TV, which is actually a feature I use quite often. So Google Assistant, which is what I use, is also available on both TVs. And that means you can group it and control it via the Google Assistant app or speakers around your home. I'll be honest though, other than using AirPlay to send photos to the TV, I rarely use any of these integrations. Overall, I've used both of these TVs for at least a week. The LG is my daily TV, and the Samsung I used exclusively for over a week, and that was for movies and gaming and so on. Now during that time, I found the Samsung was great. Other than the poor viewing angles, if I wasn't sat directly in front of the TV, it did not fail to impress me. The colours were vibrant, the game mode was incredible, and the minimalist remote was actually really, really nice to use. And then you've got the LG, which was just awesome through and through. I mean, other than the reflections during the day while trying to watch a dark scene, this OLED just exceeds everything that I want from a TV. It's vibrant, it's punchy, it's super, super clean. Game mode is incredible. The view and angles on this are just incredible too. So I mean, being able to literally view the TV at any angle without compromise is what sells it for me. But what do you think? Is the OLED the better choice? Or would you choose the QLED? Well, that wraps up this week's video. And if you've got any questions at all or suggestions for a new video, please drop them in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. And if this video was useful to you, please consider dropping a like. And if you're interested in seeing any more Tesla and tech videos, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my other social channels, including Instagram and Twitter. Until next time. <laughs>